Hey guys, I'm Ezra and in this Lord of the Rings Rise to War video, I will show you how you can build your undying in a devastating way so you command respect on the battlefield. I didn't intend to create this video, but many people in my fellowship reached out to me and asked to build to, to make a guide because they all liked my undying and here I am giving this guide. So let's get into it. Let's first establish what the strength of the Undying is. And looking at his R0 titles and skills, we can immediately see that here at Undead Commander. He is a great commander in mitigating the damage his troops are receiving. How does he do that? Looking at Undead Commander, he is giving all of your troops a chance to evade the physical damage they may receive. Which is great. You should max this talents this title to out and then on top of that he is reducing the damage the enemy troops are dealing to you and on top of that the enemy range troops deal 28 percent less damage to you and this is huge all of these abilities are there to give you survivability and this works so great with his r5 kit because r5 is giving him a burst heal, a burst resurrection starting on round 5. You will resurrect a lot of troops and I will show you why this is so great in combination with a specific type of troop. And on top of that, it is nullifying all the healing that your enemy may receive starting on round 4. And then you have fanatism which is increasing the damage your melee units are dealing the longer the fight lasts. And in comparison to the Witch King, the Witch King, who is someone who tries to burst damage someone within the first rounds and finish the fight, the, the Undying in comparison is someone who wants to fight as long as he can, because the longer the fight lasts, the stronger he becomes. So. He isn't looking for a way to burst, he's looking for a way to survive his enemy. That's his strategy. And in order to survive his, en uh, his enemy, he also has Chilling Edge. Chilling Edge is draining focus from your enemy. Draining focus means that you are taking focus away from the enemy and adding it to your own focus. This means that, for example, commanders that deal focus damage, such as Gandalf or or Galadriel, they won't be dealing great burst damage because you have taken a big chunk of uh, their focus away. And also, focus is mitigating the damage you receive. So, by taking away focus from the enemy, you make it so that they receive more damage and you mitigate even more damage to the mitigation abilities you already have. At, at, at zero at r0 and this is so great but we also need to put some points into ring wrath nazgul screech and morgul poison and i will explain to you why whenever you skill your your undying like this you always you always have to put your first points into ring wraith two points into this one point into nazgul screech one point into morgul poison and in this order because the order in which you put your points into your skills is the order in which they activate in battle. And after you have put these points into this, you want to put two points into Undertaker and one point into Plague. And Plague is the reason why we have this order, because Plague will nullify healing received on round 3. Because this needs two rounds before it can activate and on round 3 it will unleash. And many commanders like, like Eowyn or Galadriel have big burst healing on round 3. This ability will nullify it. But it can't nullify it if it gets dispelled. In order for it to not getting dispelled, you have to put points into Ring Wraith or Nazgul Screech or, or Morgul Poison. I'm just putting a bit into everything because then I have the maximum amount of debuffs. So the chances of Plague being dispelled gets reduced as far as it can get reduced so this is the logic behind it after you had put your first points into this and then into plague 
now you can uh, feel free to fill out your other talents. So we are very strong in prolonged fights. We want the fights to last as long as possible. And we want the team composition that is making sense with what we have here. And in my opinion, Mountain Trolls and Reapers are a must. Like, like you must always, or in many cases, you should include Mountain Trolls and Reapers into your troop composition. And here is why. Your Reapers have an ability which activates on round 5. Now, let me jump over and show you what I mean. Reapers, right? Your Reapers have this ability called Execution. And round 5 and onwards, your damage is increased by 70% and it lasts until the battle ends. This is huge. This is so huge. And, and if you look at the general stats of your Reapers, they have okay stats. Like, this is decent. But we can make it even more decent. We can make it awesome. In addition to Execution, well, let's jump back to our our undying you see we have fanatism and this will increase the damage they are dealing even further the longer the battle lasts and at the point when you reach round five this is already at 25 percent now add this to execution you get a big number of increased damage and it gets better the longer the battle lasts and not just only that, you are resurrecting a lot of Reapers before their true potential gets unleashed on round 5. This is great. And at the same time, you are ensuring that they stay alive with mitigating damage. And they are kind of squishy, so you have to do that. You are allowing them to dodge damage whenever possible. And your Mountain Trolls are protecting your Reapers with Town. And Mountain Trolls tend to get countered fast by bow knights or axe throws but by having nimbleness you are taking away that weakness and ensuring that your mountain trolls stay alive so they can ensure that your reapers stay alive so they can get powered up with second wind and with fanatism and with execution to annihilate your enemy and this is why i think this build works so great but there is also a weakness to the end dying. And let me show you what I mean. As you see, all of these abilities are in order to boost your own troop or to mitigate the damage you're receiving or to decrease the damage of your enemy troop. That doesn't mean that the damage the enemy commander is dealing is mitigated as well. Oh no. And that's our weakness. Commanders that are doing great damage by themselves, such as Dualin, Gimli, Legolas, Dine, they are a hard counter to the Undying. But I think there is a way to even nullify that weakness, but I will get to it once we check our gear. There is a way, I think there is a way. And our second weakness would be Madness. We will always run three different troops within our army. And once we are affected by madness, we don't have control of whom our Reapers are damaging. And I think we should respect that weakness of ours. Just keep it in mind. Because we have to do something later, right? If there is something we can do. Now, let's jump to the part where I show you how we can cover our weaknesses. First things first, I'm going full damage mitigation. Everything is in regards to damage mitigation. Here you see I'm using the Battle Axe with the Special Effect Concussion. It has a chance, uh, it has four refinements on it, so I have a chance of 50% to reducing 30% uh, the damage of one enemy troop type. Then I have Superior Hauberg, which is giving me increased armor while also providing a big chunk of might and also mitigating the damage my melee units receive by a percentage. Then I have the Bone Mask. This is giving me a big chunk of might and then also focus which is also decreasing damage i'm receiving army hp which is always great to have and then manipulate and i have experimented in season two right now i'm in season three by the way but in season two i was running this bone mask with the fully refined hysteria and i think that bone mask with manipulate as a special ability is much better 
than Hysteria. I'm just talking about my own experience, but this is working so great. Every second round, we are mitigating damage. Enemy troop, one enemy troop deals 42% less damage every second round. This is huge. And I'm not even sure there is a flawless helmet that can keep up with this ability. Like, I like this so much that I would even consider having this equipped even if I were to have a 5-star legendary item. I think I would still use this. But we will see about that in a moment. Then I'm using Drums of Moria, which is giving decent might, focus, overall stats. Like, overall good stats and also attack melee, plus 2 damage. This is great for the Reapers to have. And, now here's a quality of life changer. Army speed for your melee units. And guess what? Your mountain trolls are too slow. They will give you a hard time moving from A to B. And having this, and everyone who is playing with mountain trolls will immediately understand how amazing this is. You will feel like Sonic with your mountain trolls with this. I'm just kidding here, but you get the gist of it, right? So this is our purple gear, working great so far. <laughs> I mean, people within my fellowship have even started uh, copying my build and my gear after seeing how I am doing in my battle reports, but we will come to the battle reports in a moment as well. First, let me show you what I would equip if I had flawless gear, 5 star and maxed out with, with max refinement. So here I have prepared a sheet for you which gear I would equip if I had this flawless gear, 5 stars, 5 refinement. But it doesn't even have to be 5 refinement, but if I had this gear, I would totally go for it. Now, let me explain you why one by one. The Black Mace. I think this is the best item the Undying can equip. Like, commanders in general that are boosting your troops and are weak against commander damage. And I think the Undying is weak against the commander damage. I think the, 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 the Witch King is weak against commander damage. But with this, you can fight that. And what do I mean by that? Look at the special ability called Dominate. After commander attacks against enemy commander, 50% chance of re reducing next damage dealt by a certain percentage. If it is zero refined, you reduce the commander's damage by 10%. If maximum refined, 60%! This is huge! Dualin, Gimli, Legolas, Dain, they are getting shut down by this item alone. And I haven't seen a purple item yet that can do this. So this is the only item I have seen that makes the most sense for evil and undead can wear it. This is great. This is also boosting your Reapers as you see. Attack Orcs plus one, a big chunk of might. This is just too good to not equip. Guys, if you find the Black Mace, don't get rid of it. Keep it. I think even your Witch King will benefit by it greatly. But that's another story for another video. Let's jump over to our chest piece. We have Warborn Battleplate. And I think this is one of the best or if not it is the best chess piece you can have for your commanders because your might based commanders because it has decent might. In addition, it gives you some defenses for your melee units, which is always nice to have because that's damage mitigation as well. And it is giving you army speed. And army speed, always nice to have, especially when you have mountain trolls in your composition, which we have, as you know. But on top of that, Fortitude of Soldiers is the flavor we are looking for because this is, on top of the mitigation we are already bringing to the table, additional mitigation. Like, how much more mitigation can we bring to the table? This is amazing. And I'm not sure if this is better or the one special effect where you get increased defenses. You just have to try out, but since flawless equipment is so hard to get by, just take whatever you have and try to improve on that and see what works best for you. So I would use either the damage mitigation fortitude of soldiers here or the increased defenses one. Moving on to the helmet, cask of the submerged isle. Overall, generally speaking, good stats, might and focus and a bit of speed. But 
What we're looking at is Aegis, because it is giving us, for the first four rounds, all of our troops are getting a percentage of chance to resist stun and madness. And this is huge. Because every round counts, and in every round we need to deal damage to the enemy troops. If not, our troops get reduced while they are beating themselves, and in addition to that are receiving damage from the enemy troops, which is decreasing our survivability in total. And how do you counter this? With Aegis. Resist stuns, resist madness, which is always nice to have. And I'm not sure which is better, the Bone Mask with Manipulate or Aegis. But I th still think that the Aegis will come on top. But this is subject to experiment. Next one, Palantir of Orphan. This is our accessory. And I think this is the best accessory for the Undying. There is nothing comparable to it. Because this is giving you decent focus, okay-ish might, but also plus one attack. Your Reapers are benefiting yet again with this. And on top of that, the special effect called Tactical Mark will allow you for the first three rounds to always hit your enemy, even if they have a weight. And we all know how these Elvish units like to await, or how Gilgalad is giving them an ability which gives them like like 70% a chance to dodge your troops damage, which is devastating. You should never allow that to happen. And with this item, we can at least ensure for the first rounds, for the first rounds, that's not going to happen. In addition, we get a chance of dealing maximum damage. It is a nice to have quality of life benefit. We'll take it. So guys, this is my undying so far. These are my plans with the undying. But uh, I'm curious, what do you think? Uh, if you have an Undying that is doing great as well, and what would you suggest? What ideas do you have? Let me know in the comments below. And I must say that I am still learning the game. This is just an idea, what I believe is to be working well with, with the Undying. If you have ideas as well, if you have your own Undying and uh, tested some, some gear and, and uh, compositions with him, hey, feel free to leave a comment like <laughs> the comment section is there for that purpose let's share our knowledge and see how we can increase the e efficiency of the undying even further hey guys future azra here i'm jumping in because i forgot to compare the warborn battle plate with the respect level 10 chess piece of the undying i think the Rev's cloak is awesome because all the the stats are overall good but the army speed stat isn't what we are looking for here because our mountain trolls aren't getting any increased speed stats here. And that's still going to slow us down. So the speed stat here will not count for us. But Unspeakable Horror, the special effect which I'm looking for. Each round against three enemy units, 5% chance of succumbing to madness. If you have maxed this out, it will be 25%, I think. I'm not sure, but I think. Because I'm assuming that... Whenever you refine it one star level, it will add up another 5%. If that is the case, that is awesome. When would I make the jump from my Warborn Battle Plate to switch over to Wraith's Cloak? In my opinion, it is worth to jump once you have strengthened it four times and also refined it four times. Because then the madness percentage will should, well, it should reach 20%. I think 20% falling victim to madness is a good number to work around. So only then would I jump over to the Wraith's Cloak. But keep your Warborn Battle Plate anyway. Don't use it to, to strengthen your Wraith's Cloak. That's not worth it. Just use other flawless equipment to strengthen your Wraith's Cloak. And once you have strengthened and refined the four stars, that's when you change your Warborn Battle Plate to the Wraith's Cloak. And then you can give your Warborn Battle Plate to any of your other commanders. They all will appreciate it. Alright, that's it. Let's continue. Generally speaking, I'm always running 60 Mountain Trolls. Because you don't need more. This is enough to have a fair 1v1 fight. And you will still have some Mountain Trolls left after your first hit. And then you can still reinforce. 60 is enough. Then I'm filling at least 
3200 reapers into this comp and this is a must have like you should always have at least this much of trolls and this much of reapers and the third type of troop is something that is totally up to you like use whatever you feel is right at that moment against that faction you are fighting against in my case i'm using warlords because my enemy is Arnor and Lindon. They have a lot of archers, range units, and warlords are doing great against those. Let's jump over to the battle reports and see what I can share with you. All right, guys, I will show you only where he fights. And what I mean by that uh, is that the enemy needs to have at least a specific amount of gear because it just wouldn't be fair if the enemy is fully blue equipped. That wouldn't count. So in this case I have chosen this Eowyn and there is a there is there are many reasons why I have chosen this Eowyn. Let's get started with the team composition. So this Eowyn isn't including bow knights into her team composition, which is great, or else she would get destroyed by my warlord. So I'm giving you props for that, King of Persia. Great job. And one more props for including three riders into your team composition because three riders are not just only mounted troops, they also bring something to the table called Steady Will. Each round, 100% chance to cure a negative status effect. If I use my ability called Flake on, on the, the Bree Riders, they can't be healed anymore, right? But with their cleansing ability, they can get rid of it. If we check out her gear, you will see that she has decent gear. You might argue that she could have picked a better flavor here. Instead of Flay, she could have used Melee Might. Because Eowyn is a true boosting commander. But this Eowyn has so much respect that he hasn't only maximized his true boosting abilities. He also had enough points left to put into his damage dealing skills. This Eowyn isn't something to joke about. She has a lot of damaging abilities. This is a great Eowyn. Ability, Frontline Rescue, Damaging Ability, Dernhelm. This was a fair fight, guys. This is what I'm trying to say. And we still came on top of that, considering we haven't even included Halberdiers into our team comp. If we had Halberdiers or Wagon Riders, this could have been a victory instead of a draw. Now, here is a very interesting report. Thorin. And judging by the report, we have done a decent job. Let's see what has happened. Like, like consider the fact that we hadn't mountain trolls in this team composition. Because at that point, I was already out of mountain trolls. But let's see. Thorin, what gear do you have? Shatter. After the commander's normal attack against target, Fishman has a victim defense minus 15%. Decent gear with this composition. Thorin is kind of both. He's boosting his dwarven units while also dealing damage himself like i really like what thorin is doing and this gear is amazing i like this guy's thorin a lot and i like what he has done with him but still we are doing a great job against him considering our mountain trolls aren't in this composition or else this would have looked much different let's check out this report because this is very interesting Usually, Gilgalad is considered among the top, top commanders in this game. Like, on par with the Witch King, maybe even a bit on top of the Witch King, because he is devastating Witch King. And look what we are doing with Gilgalad. He is killing our big bro Witch King, and this is how we pay him back. Like, big brother Undying comes in and slaps, slaps Gilgalad all the way back to Lindon. Now let's see what gear he has. Decent gear with the correct flavor, ranged might. I like this Gilgalad already. Uh, Commander focus, all right. I, I guess he has this equipped because uh, he doesn't have anything better, so he'll just accept this. Hysteria, which is great, so he already has uh, the best in slot. Headpiece with the best in slot uh, special effect. And of course, Harper Florian with Elven Strength. All right, I like this Gilgalad, and he also has him at least at respect level five. So this was an even fight. Like this was an even fight. 
It was just uh, not lucky enough because I had warlords in my team comp and he was running melees as well as ranged units against me. So I have won the team composition in this game. Let's continue. I like this report. This is this was an even fight. All right. Now here we have a fight that is quite decent and it, it is a fair fight guys. I have looked so long just to find this fight. This Gandalf has high respect level as well as decent gear which is why I'm showing you this. So cover the smite that's okay because now we can proc the healing then quilted armor overall good stats five star five time refined swan helm I think he didn't have anything better but this is still giving lots of focus so this is nice too and of course his smoking pipe with a stain this is best in slot in consideration to purple gear so this is a very decent Gandalf and look what we are doing with them and we didn't even have mountain trolls in our team comp guys now here is a very special report which i would like to show you not because of the team composition of the enemy he has bonites in his team comp which is bad against undying with warlords so that's a given but it's more about his gear he has a gear that is very interesting and it is not this one it is not the reach of the ridder mark by the way he needs a uh, Mounted Might, he needs to boost the damage of his mounted troops, not this. Golden Skin, Allied Mounted Units, damage received, okay, this is fine. Then he has Horse Metalman, this is amazing, with the right flavor against the Undying. Mount Vigor is the best against the Undying. But this is the item I was talking about. This fight is special because of this, now let me show you something. Because it has a special ability, Second Wind. On round 4, all, all allies removes all debuffs and recover percentage. Now, long story short, this thing has removes all debuffs. And this is something which is also kind of a weak point of us. This is a weakness of us. Because now he can remove from the undying the debuffs he is applying on him. Like, like damage mitigation debuff. Remember, our... Rank 0 skills, damage mitigation, that counts as a debuff and he can now remove it with this. Enemies with this item are not to be underestimated. Just wanted to put this out. This is a very fair fight because this Sayodin is just like me level 50, has very good gear, good talents and amazing team composition. This group composition makes totally sense against an undying. But let me show you his gear first. So here we have Reach of the Riddermark, the right flavor, Might of Cavalry, that's awesome. Best in slot, chest piece, five times refined. He is going with Deafness, which is also great. Horseman's Helmet and the Night Staff with Pursuit. Mm, yeah, that's okay. But Fiddle of the Elders could have been better, but we all know how hard it is to get best in slot flawless equipment but judging by his skills i can already tell that this guy has selected the right talent this is a meta build theoden very meta i like this a lot now why didn't the undying do great against this so first of all if i knew that i would fight this theoden i wouldn't have included wallets into my team cop instead I would have gone with Halberd Years or Bargain Rider. And believe me, the report would have looked much more different than this. But good fight, man. Paka, I like what you have done with your Theoden. Giving you a thumbs up, mate. Now, let's look at this Dwalin because he's doing something different. He's going with only one different troop type, being Guardians. And let's see what gear he has. Battle Eggs. Uh, he has the wrong flavor, it shouldn't be melee might, it needed to be flay. Then Durance Plate. This is okay -ish. Iron Bassinen, this is cool as well. But I still think there are better options than this. And yeah, so his gear isn't that great. But he's at least at rank 5, good respect level. At very high respect level if you look at this. He 
has even maxed out Warrior of the Lonely Mountain. Alright. Here we have a report against Gimli, but guys, if your Gimli has the right troop composition and the correct order in which he has picked his skills, this wouldn't look like this. Like, I think Gimli would have wrecked us if he had done what I just suggested. So, this isn't a normal report you're seeing here right now. I'm still looking for a report that is refle reflecting reality. But, just wanted to point out, shouldn't include just one melee type with one range type against Gundabad. <laughs> Warlords, eat you for breakfast. Here we have a report where we are fighting Galadriel, and as many of you know, Galadriel can be very devastating. But here, you're just totally destroying her. Uh, among those reasons why, because she has ranged units into her melee comp, Warlords are destroying her. Also, Galadriel can't do her focus damage thing because we are sucking away all of her focus with our Respect 5 skill. Chilling Edge, as you remember. She can't... It's focus damage. Her focus damage won't be that great because we're sucking it away, as you know. And... Her healing is getting shut down by our second wind ability. And yeah, that's it. There goes your Galadriel. That's it. And it won't look anything different. The Galadriel will always do this against the Undying. I have one final report for you guys. And I have chosen this report because this Dwalin is the best player I have fought so far and he really knows what he's doing. I like this guy a lot. Rainbow, I give you three times the props, man. You are doing such a great job. Keep on the good work, man. Now let's analyze what has happened here. Even though I have Warlords who should do great against melee with ranged, he still has won this straight off. But why? He has amazing gear. It is on equal level with mine at least, if not even better because it is flawless gear, but I won't use this as an excuse. Great chest plate, great weapon, round 6 almost allied commander damage that plus 5, awesome, but I think there, there are better options. Arrow or sprite might of force allies in the damage that plus 4%. Alright, this is okay. This is great. And as you see, he has high respect level. He has so many skills maxed out. This is an amazing Dwalin. And this is the Undying's weakness, or among the few weaknesses he has. Let me repeat. Commanders that are dealing high commander damage is one of his weakness, of the Undying. And Madness, as well as some debuff mechanics that, that take away his mitigation skills. This Dwalin has high commander damage. Do you remember the, the sheet with the flawless equipment I have shown you? As a weapon, I recommended you to use the Black Mace with the special effect Dominance. Because Dominance can reduce, if maxed out, commander damage by 60%. And I wonder how this report would have looked like if we had that gear. Just wanted to put that out, guys. This is the Undying. He is doing an amazing job. And I still think there is lots of room to work on him to make him even better so he can be on a competitive level even with commander damage dealing commanders. And that's it for today guys. If you enjoyed this video let me know by leaving a like and consider subscribing. See you guys next time.